today what we want to do is a little bit of training on uh, how to conduct the daily huddles. Um, to begin with, let's talk a little bit about what, as a refresher, what's the purpose of this meeting? You know, um, there's things that we're trying to do and there's things that we're really not trying to do. <clears throat> so what we're trying to do is make sure that everyone's priorities are clear and correct, uh, that we're working on the right things at the right time. Um, that So for an example of that might be a person's got a yellow task and they're working on the yellow task and it's got 10 days of slack and there's a pink critical task that's queued and ready to go in their backlog. Maybe they're not working on the right thing right now. So it's, it's a quick check of, of, of those things. Um, as well as trying to make sure that we're not that people aren't overloading themselves, you know that they're that they're not take, taking on too much, which really just tends to lead to multitasking. So we're doing that, and then especially for the critical tasks, we're trying to make sure that the handoffs are smooth, that uh, we're not dropping the ball on the on the critical path on the critical chain, um, that people are aware of that they're gonna be likely be on the critical path tomorrow and that they start to think about what they need in order to be ready to go and you know things like that. So we're doing that. We're also then managing our blockages. <clears throat> it's, it's about the only opportunity that we get, at least as a team, to, to talk about um, who's blocked, what's blocking you, what's the nature of the block, <clears throat> and you know, is there anything we can do to help? I mean, being blocked isn't a bad thing. Some some people, I think, are shy to say I'm blocked, and it's actually really just the opposite. We we need to hear, you know, what's getting in your way, um, and so we can try to figure out if there's a way that we can help, you know, eliminate that block. And then um, number four would be to manage the the actionable queue tasks. You know, things that are in the backlog that are ready to go they're they're just waiting for somebody to have time is there is there any opportunity there to move those things forward uh to get those things moving you know uh, so maybe we can hand it off to another individual or not you know but so those are the things that we're really looking at <clears throat> what it's really not is it's it's not a status meeting it's not a let's review each and every task and tell me where you're at now you know, I mean, a little bit of that's fine and prob probably, you know, healthy, but this isn't a status review of every task. You know, we, we, everyone's working. It's great to hear kind of, you know, what you learned from yesterday as it may be relevant to other people, you know, that that's perfect. That's great. So a little bit of that is really healthy, but, you know, we don't need to like have a regurgitation of what you said yesterday. That's, that's kind of a waste of everyone's time really. And um, sometimes, uh, sometimes we like to get into in-depth technical conversations. Um, and again, you know, that's not what this meeting's for. This meeting is intended to be 15 minutes or less. Um, that's the goal. Um, so when we get into real in-depth technical conversations and we spiral there, uh, we got most of the people looking at each other while two people are having a you know ongoing conversation so hey that's that sounds like that's important let's let's offline that let's talk more about that right after this meeting you know that that's great but we just have to be aware that that uh, we don't want to spiral into those in-depth in technical conversations for for very long um who runs the meeting well that's one question some uh, some some groups, you know, it might be Al. Uh, some groups, uh, it's the project lead, you know, for a particular project. Uh, could be the leader of that project. Some groups take turns. Man, uh, everyone takes a turn running the meeting. Usually, I would say core team type folks. Uh, not so much the the shared resources. They're they're kind of, you know, they may or may not be uh, at the meeting very often, uh, depending. But um, so. Some groups take turns, and that seems to run really well. Um, uh, what I like about that is when you're when you're helping to facilitate the process, um, it helps you to better understand what the process is all about. Um, and you and then when you're uh, a participant, you you kind of help to make sure that 
that it's running uh, smoothly and effectively and you know you're willing to kind of intervene as necessary uh, it's not it's not a it's not a project managers meeting per se it's it's the team's meeting so and also when you're when you're running the meeting you're kind of busy working with the software as well and so sometimes having one person kind of run the software and another person the project manager kind of lead the conversation that can be very uh, useful as well but there's no wrong or right way to actually do it of course so what i'm going to show you here is what we do to prepare and where it says open my playbook it should probably say either open either the huddle or my playbook just depends are we you know if we're going to run this at a as a project specific type huddle with that project team or are we going to do it more as a pool of resources if we do it as a pool of resources we we generally use my playbook if we're doing a very project specific type of huddle like yosemite you know then it's using the the huddle view we're probably going to need to experiment a little bit i think with with this group um, but either way um, in either of those views we have a game plan split window we want to definitely open that up and we want to turn slack on because slack helps us to understand priorities as well if i have two yellow tasks and one has six days of slack and one has 16 days of slack i should work on the one with six first yeah, it's at a higher level of risk of eventually, uh, you know, turning pink. So, <clears throat> and then what we do in really no particular order, but we we basically do a review kind of person by person, you know, row by row. You know, we're looking at an individual, and we look at yesterday's tasks. And when we look at yesterday's tasks, we're not we're not looking to review every single thing in yesterday that that's not what we're trying to do we're, we're trying to look at what did you get done yesterday so what got marked complete yesterday and if we see something marked complete we select it and the reason that we want to select it is because that's that's when it will show up in the game plan that's when the game plan navigates to that task and that'll give us some context it'll be much easier to see what the successor of that task is and who the person that owns that ta uh, successor task is. And we're gonna just check in with that person and, and, you know, and say, you know, number one, it brings awareness to, to that individual that that task is now ready to be worked on. So that's number one. Number two, it's, um, we wanna check, do you have everything that you need in order to begin working on that? It doesn't mean they need to begin working on it. It's just a question, do you have everything you need? And you know, it's a quick little, yeah, I think so. I think I'm good. Okay, yeah. If not, then what do you need? Who do you need it from? Let's make sure that, that we try to make sure that we get you what you need in a in a timely, timely manner. Okay. So that's that's the only thing that we look at in yesterday. And then we look at which the person has on their on their current day, and we select tasks, just kind of one at a time, and it's so that we can see it in the game plan as well, because it's 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 quite helpful. And we're going to ask a question, some some form of this question. You can ask, are you blocked? You could ask, is there anything getting in your way? You know this lots of different ways you might ask this and those are all fine but be careful not to ask hey how's that going that's a very open-ended question you know the person now is probably likely to give you a, a, a status report and a little bit of that's fine but we're really not looking for that as much as we are looking for is there anything getting in your way you know so so and you'll you'll morph to to do it your own way you know you might uh, however you're trying to ask it just make sure that you make sure that that you're getting to is there anything getting in your in in your way or do you have any blocks on that as well and if the answer is yeah i am blocked um a little quick description by the individual to say what the nature of the block is sometimes there's a quick little conversation amongst a couple people that can help to give some direction to help resolve the block um, if it's going to take longer, you know, and we're not going to be able to resolve it in the context of, of the meeting, that, that's fine. Let's 
let's meet after this for another five minutes, you know, something like that. Um, not all blocks are created equally. And what I, what I mean by that is blocks on the critical path are the ones that are most urgent. Those are the things that we really, you know, if you're blocked and you're working on a critical activity, uh, we need to make time to, to do what we can to resolve it uh, as quickly as, as, as possible. If it's a yellow task with 16 days of slack, it, it's, it's good to know that you're blocked. It's good to know what the nature of the block is. Uh, we might be able to help you right away, but it doesn't have as much urgency. It, it, there's more time on it, you know. Um, also, we glance at the utilization dial. You can just hover over it and see what the total hours are for the person. We just want to make sure you're not solid red or exploded. You know, so if you're solid red or exploded, that's that's overloading. You know, you shouldn't be solid red or, or exploded first thing in the morning. You should be. You should take something off your plate that says, my my the most important thing for me to work on is this task, or maybe these two, or maybe these. You know, three, as long as I'm not overloaded. But when Paul? you start getting to overloaded, yeah. Uh, just just a, a quick uh, question about the um, overloading. It appears as though, the maybe you covered this yesterday and I missed it, but it appears as though that the loading is default to six hours. Is that correct? Hmm. Um, no, I don't think so. I think it's at eight. It's at eight. I think so. I'll I'll does double it, check. Does it turn? Does it? It seems as though it turned red or something. It, oh, about yeah. Red. It's gonna it's gonna start getting into the red. So it's yeah, gonna start okay. getting That's, into the red at six hours. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna turn. Yeah. So it's gonna be like three three quarters and a little red at six hours. Yes. That's 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 correct. Okay. And is that something that the uh, admin has access to kind of adjust that? No. Well, so it's a function of a percentage of capacity. So the admin can adjust the person's capacity, which will have an influence on when it turns yellow and red okay. uh, or, you know, exploded. But as where, as far as where the thresholds are, no, that's all hard, hardwired into the, into the system right now. That's, that's so it, okay. I'll follow up with on that. Um, okay. I just wanted to understand what it was telling me. It was just, yeah, so when you're up to, I think, 70%, like between, well, 0 to 50% is green. Once you go above 50%, uh, it turns yellow. Up to 70%, then it starts turning red. Got it. And then at 100%, it, it looks like an exploding, you know, tomato. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's should be a person's head exploding. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Sure. So we want to, we want to just, you know, we're not really asking, uh, this is, we're not really asking this. I'm asking this in my, in my head. Is this person overloaded? You know, they have too much on their plate. Are their, their priorities really clear? Do I need mm -hmm. to kind of coach them a little bit? You know, um, because, you know, if they have too much on their plate, then it's probably not so clear what their most important thing is. So, Maybe another way of sort of asking this is, you know, hey, Joe, what do you think your most important task of the day is? That'd be great. Yeah. You know, and you're going to focus on that first, right? Until that's just done. Yep. Oh, great. Okay. Blocks on that. You're all good to go. Got everything you need. Yep. Great. Yeah. You know? So when I say it, that there's a recognition, you, you, you can leave things on the day as long as everyone's clear what their most important thing is and that they're going to focus on that. Yeah. If you really want to make it clear, you can take the lower priority thing and move it back in the backlog, you know, and just, just make it clear. Just don't worry about it. That can wait till later or till, you know, tomorrow, but it's got to wait until the, these, these things are, are done. You know, that's the goal. Okay. And then we do check the backlog, of course, you know, we got to look at what's in the backlog, but we're not checking everything in the backlog. Uh, there's going to be a number of tasks that, maybe in your backlog for the next two weeks. Uh, most of them are not actionable, right? They're not queued yet. You know, so don't worry about them. We're, we're not reviewing all of those. That's that's kind of a waste of time in, in this meeting. We're just looking for the ones that have the filled dot on it. If it's queued, 
that means it's actionable, it's ready. And we want to check on that and say, you know, what is this? Uh, should we really be working on this before working on what you've got on your plate on the current day? You know, usually, usually that's not the case. Usually it's, uh, I only have so much time and I can't work on that yet. Okay, that, that's fine. So the op what we look for is an opportunity perhaps to have handed off to somebody else. You know, if it's possible, if it makes sense. Um, but it might make perfect sense that it just has to sit there and wait, and that's fine too, uh, unless it's pink. <laughs> pink and critical, then we're really looking for a way to keep keep that moving, you know. Because otherwise, we know we're we're eating into our buffer. You know, that's that's uh, you know that's what that means. And basically, at that point, you know, we we go through the review of each person, and we have that conversation as a team, and we're done. We we execute. We we leave the meeting. Um, like I said, 15 minutes or less. Um, some early on, it's new. You know, we're learning, so it'll it'll take a little longer. Uh, there'll be questions about the software and various other things, so that that's fine. But probably after about a week, a week's worth of practice, I would just say maybe we want to start truncating it. You know, if we get to 15 minutes, we're we're done. You know, and we'll regroup again tomorrow. 